Hey everyone, Nick Espinoza, your chief security fanatic here, and it is not Sunday, but we are doing breaches of the week. I apologize for not getting this out yesterday. It was just a crazy scheduling conflict day. Couldn't get around to it, but here we are. We are going to do the breaches of last week right now, and we will pick up our normally scheduled uh, video here and podcast next Sunday uh, for obviously this upcoming week's breaches, of which there will be many, I have no doubt. And with that, Let's start in the United Kingdom with the Hackney Council. And actually, now that I think about it, before I do that, let me thank the following people that sent me information, as I always do. And that would be Jason Dance, Barrett Peterson, David Walker, and Chris Fallon. Guys, I really appreciate it. And if you have a tip for me on Breaches of the Week, please feel free to give me a shout out. And now... Let's go back to the Hackney Council in North London in the United Kingdom. They got hit with a cyber attack and not much detail uh, was known in terms of their official announcement on this. But there have been reports uh, basically saying that it was so deep that Hackney Council may actually have problems paying for housing uh, for people in their area, meaning landlords may not be getting their rent checks on time for those people that have subsidized housing in that area. So... Hopefully they're going to get that straightened out pretty soon, and uh, we'll go on from there. But by virtue of that, let's head on over to uh, the United States and talk about Barnes & Noble. Now, on October 10th, uh, users were complaining on Nook, that's their e-reader, uh, the Facebook page, and on Twitter that they can no longer access their library of purchase ebooks and magazine subscriptions. Barnes & Noble said that they suffered a severe network issue and we're in the process of restoring uh, their server backups, basically having an outage. Now, according to Goodreader, store managers had told them that Barnes & Nobles had a quote-unquote virus in their networks um, that started in a, in a corporate office and eventually made its way down to the stores. Once in the stores, it affected the cashiers and prevented orders from being placed. Email addresses, uh, billing addresses, shipping addresses, and purchase history were exposed on these attack systems. So heads up to you if you use Barnes & Noble. Moving on, let's talk about online proctoring service ProctorTrack. They disabled uh, access to their service after their parent company, Verisent, was essentially hacked. Now, students began receiving emails sent by the attacker from a Verisent support account. The email contained racial slurs and falsely stated that the company and ProctorTrack had ceased operations. To add to further damage, the attackers trolled Verisent by then defacing their company's website and did a rickroll. That's right. Going back old school, they popped up Rick Astley's Never Gonna uh, Give You Up video on the company's website. Soon after, Verisent disabled their Proctor uh, Track service on October 13th and apologized for the email sent out by the attacker. And so hopefully they'll get back online. Moving on, let's talk about Robinhood, the investment app. And I swear I talked about them last year as well uh, because new, uh, nearly 2,000 users of the stock trading and investment app Robinhood are the latest victims of a steady string of financially motivated cyber attacks on that organization. Now, since 2019, users have been reporting attacks that result in personal stocks being sold off and money transferred to fraudulent accounts. This week's incident uh, basically leads the world to believe that these attacks were more widespread than previously indicated. It does not appear, though, that Robinhood systems were breached to gain access Evidence actually points to threat actors either obtaining user credentials outside of Robinhood systems, meaning they found it on the dark web, they did uh, like a credential stuffing attack, or they gained access to users' email accounts via phishing and then initiated actions to change passwords to take over the Robinhood account. So if you have Robinhood, definitely make sure, or any platform for that matter, definitely make sure you're using unique passwords for absolutely everything, uh, you know, to get around all of that kind of stuff and, and, and enable multi-factor authentication on everything in your life. That's just, you should be doing that for everything now. Moving on, let's talk about Friendemic. They're a digital marketing, marketing provider that uh, offers services to things like uh, car dealerships in the United States. They just exposed 2.7 million records consisting of personally identifiable information following a misconfiguration in their cloud settings. No surprise there. The 2.7 million records included personal information such as full names, phone numbers, email addresses, and 16 OAuth tokens stored in plain text. Not good. Friendemic has told security researchers that the records were not related to customers of its car dealership clients, uh, adding also that the OAuth tokens were only for internal system use. Nevertheless, plain text, not good. However, the firm acted quickly and remediated the massive leak within a day, according to them, and they released a statement claiming that they were in the process of conducting a review of its data security, and so hopefully that's as far as it will go 
obviously a very serious issue. Moving on, let's talk about e-research e technology or ERT. They're based out of Philadelphia and they sell com uh, software used in hundreds of clinical trials. Now they had a ransomware attack that basically slowed down some of these trials over the past few weeks which are very concerning because among those hit were IQVIA, which is a contract uh, research organization helping to manage AstraZeneca's COVID vaccine trial, and Bristol Myers Squibbs, the drug maker leading a consortium of companies to develop a quick test for uh, the coronavirus as well. Now, ERT has not said how many clinical trials were affected, but its software is being used in drug trials across Europe, Asia, and North America. It was used in three quarters of the trials that led to drug approvals by the Food and Drug Administration last year, according to their website. So them getting hit slows the entire ability to make a res uh, to get a vaccine out for COVID-19. Uh, and that is a horrible, horrible thing. So hopefully... That will go away uh, very quickly. Uh, next up is a company called Intcomex or Incomex. They are based out of Miami and they do, quote, value added solutions and technology products, end quote. They suffered a major, major data breach with nearly one terabyte of its user data being leaked. Now, the leaked data includes credit cards, passport and license scans, personal data, payroll, financial documents, customer databases, email, employee, uh, email databases, uh, employee information, as, and, 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 and on and on. Now, parts of the data were leaked on a popular Russian hacker forum for free, with the first part being made available on September 14th of this year, and the second part on September 20th. The leaker originally promised to release the entire stolen database over an undisclosed period of time. So I'm wondering if they got a uh, ransom request and simply ignored it or didn't pay it. Moving on, let's talk about the state of Colorado, because as many as 30,000 employees of the state may have been affected by a data breach. Officials with the Colorado Department of Pers Personnel and Administration say they became aware of a breach on October 7th. The state sent a letter to employees about it this past Tuesday, and it said that personal information, including social security numbers, were emailed to, and I quote, 38 benefits administrators at certain institutions of higher education, meaning somebody screwed up and accidentally sent personally identifiable information on roughly 30,000 employees outside of the state of Colorado. That constitutes a data breach. So heads up if you work for the state. Moving on, let's talk about SonicWall VPN. Uh, and this is actually really important because a lot of businesses use SonicWall. Almost 800,000 SonicWall VPN appliances will need to be updated because a new vulnerability was disclosed this past Wednesday. Now, SonicWall NSAs, which is the appliance in question, um, basically are used as firewalls, SSL VPNs all this kind of stuff. And so the component that uh, is essentially exposed to the WAN side of this um, is it can be exploited as long as they're aware of the device's IP address. Now, Tripwire, who found this, um, uh, found this vulnerability, said exploiting the bug is trivial even for an unskilled attacker. That means it's very high on the oh god scale, please patch now. In its simplest form, this bug can cause a denial of service and crash your sonic wall firewall, but a code uh, execution exploit is likely feasible as well. So if you have a SonicWall uh, and you're using SonicWall VPN it, and just SonicWall in general, please make sure you're updating that as fast as you humanly can. Moving on, let's talk about Dickie's Barbecue because on Monday, uh, the, basically the uh, dark web uh, uh, identity theft bizarre Joker stash debuted something they're calling Blazing Suns, which is a new batch of more than 3 million stolen credit cards advertising a validity rate of between 90 to 100%, which is typically an indicator that, that the merchant is not aware that they have been breached because obviously if they're doing that, they're contacting people and people are changing their credit cards and all of that. This is according to Krebs on Security. Now, multiple companies that track the sale and stolen payment card data said they have confirmed the uh, with card issuing financial institutions that the accounts for the sale, which the Blazing Sun batch have, basically had one common theme. All of them were used at various Dickie barbecue locations in the past 13 to 15 months. So if you've eaten at a Dickie's barbecue, I hope the barbecue was good, but your credit cards probably hit. Moving on, let's talk about Yazoo County School District in Mississippi. They got a cyber attack uh, last Monday. They did not specify what information was stolen or why the district decided to spend thousands of dollars uh, to resolve this issue. 
Um, but basically, they are are in this bind. Now, the school board voted to pay uh, essentially an IT company $300,000 to fix their cyber issues or maybe a cybersecurity outfit, and classes are operating as planned. So it's looking like maybe they had a ransomware attack. Uh, the disclosure was not that specific, and so here we are. But heads up, Yazoo County School District uh, students, teachers, parents, et cetera, et cetera. Moving on, let's talk about the municipality of Westlake Gladstone. They lost close to half a million dollars late last year, and that is money that is still missing from the local taxpayers. This apparently looks like a uh, business email compromise scam because the money was taken in what the municipality chief administrative officer, Coralie Smith, described as a cyber attack between November of 2019 and early of January 2020. She said she only discovered it on January 6th, when she went to print monthly bank statements. Now, the municipality doesn't know how the money was taken or who is responsible, and to date we have no resolution for it, she said, adding that 447000 was taken in 47 separate withdrawals of approximately $10,000 each. I would be willing to bet that this is a business email compromise scam. I've seen this kind of behavior before. Usually that's what it is. But again, obviously, it could be something else. But heads up, if you live in that municipality, Westlake Gladstone, you guys are out some cash. Moving on. Let me give you an update on British Airways, uh, because on October 16th of this year, the UK Information Commissioner's Office announced a fine of £20 million, which is approximately £25.8 million US, for British Airways uh, for violations of the European Union's GDPR. Now, this is a significant, uh, basically almost 90% decrease from the proposed fine of £183.3 million, pounds, which is approximately £230 million US, announced by the ICO in late 2019, but it is the largest fine imposed to date by the ICO either way. Now, they found that uh, British Airways failed to uh, process the personal data of its customers in a manner that ensured appropriate security as required under the GDPR. Uh, you know, the relevant data uh, breach took place on June between June 22nd and September 5th of 2018, if you recall, when an unified identi uh, unidentified attacker gained access to their IT systems and network, and the attacker was able to redirect customer payment cards from the British Airways website to a fraudulent site uh, and essentially skim those cards for 15 days. Uh, British Airways was informed of this issue by a third party, and uh, roughly 430,000 people were affected by this, including people I know that use British Airways frequently. So heads up to you, you may have some money coming to you. Moving on, let's talk about game developers Crytek and Ubisoft. Now, the Egregor uh, ransomware gang, I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, has hit game developer Crytek in a confirmed ransomware attack and leak what they claim were files stolen from Ubisoft's network. Now, Ubisoft and Crytek are both well-known game developers with their corporate headquarters in France and Germany, respectively, and I didn't think they were related, but maybe they are. Now, this week, the Egregor uh, ransomware gang posted archives containing unencrypted files stating that they were stolen from Ubisoft and Crytek in unrelated attacks. And it hasn't been confirmed that the attack against Ubisoft is legitimate, but sources like Bleeping Computer have confirmed that Crytek did indeed suffer a ransomware attack. So heads up if you use any one of their games or cloud services or anything else. And finally, and we have two finalies today, the first one we're going to talk about is uh, Chinese-linked uh, state-sponsored hackers, basically, because the same Chinese government-linked hackers who targeted the campaigns of both 2020 presidential candidates earlier this year have been trying to trick cust uh, users rather into installing malware by posing as the antivirus provider McAfee and using other legitimate online services like GitHub and Dropbox. Now, Shane Huntley, who's the head of Google's Threat Analysis Group, offered new details about the suspected state-sponsored attackers um, known as APT31 and their latest tactics uh, in uh, essentially a Google blog post on Friday. Now, Huntley said that one of APT 31's latest hacking techniques involved emailing links that would download malicious code hosted on the open source platform GitHub, which zillions of, I have an account there, like it's very legitimate uh, platform. The malware was built using uh, Python, that's a computing language, and uh, would allow an attacker to upload and download files as well as execute arbitrary commands through Dropbox's cloud storage services, again, according to Huntley. And I quote, every malicious piece of this attack was hosted on legitimate services, making it harder for defenders to rely on network signals for detection. Another phishing scam saw this group impersonating McAfee, obviously a legitimate antivirus maker, and basically the facade was to uh, slip malicious code into the target's machine using the same manner. And we have seen... 
a rash of these kinds of attacks where they are using legitimate software or legitimate platforms that wouldn't typically be picked up as weird behavior by antivirus or uh, firewalls and all of that kind of stuff, such as using BitLocker to actually uh, ransom and encrypt things out because it's actually using the built-in Microsoft encryption system, just uh, obviously creating a key that the user doesn't know. These kinds of things, I think, are, are uh, a technique that we've seen in the past, but they're starting to proliferate again. And I've personally been dealing with one of these for a, for a client recently as well. So, so this is a this is something to really watch, and we'll see what happens here. And finally, finally. Let's talk about home security cameras, your home security camera, possibly if you have one, because a criminal hacking group is selling access to more than 50,000 hacked security, uh, home, home security cameras, including footage of children in various states of undress, and worse, it has emerged. Now, the group, which has over 1,000 global members, has been using the messaging platform Discord to advertise essentially what it's doing, uh, and this is according to a report coming out of Asia from the uh, reporting source Asia One. They're reportedly offering access to the camera's footage for one-off subscription fee of $150 and claims to have shared over three terabytes of clips uh, with uh, basically all of its members. A 700 megabyte sample featuring around 4,000 videos is still reportedly available for free. Now, this may account for the fact that some of these clips uh, lasting just seconds to over 20 minutes have ended up on adult websites, according to, the, uh, according to the report from Asia One. As well as existing video clips, the group is apparently claiming to have a list of over 50,000 cameras um, on which basically a VIP member that pays for that privilege can explore, watch live, and even record themselves whatever they can pick up on the cameras. Now, the clips are said to have featured victims in compromising positions such as breastfeeding mothers and even school children. It's most likely that they were taken from IP security cameras, now commonplace, obviously, in many smart homes. And these victims are from all over the globe, including the United States, Thailand, South Korea, Singapore, Canada, and on and on. And this really underscores a problem that we have with IP. IoT security. We are oftentimes either buying stuff where the developers have cut corners and they're very easy to hack. I've actually done live demonstrations of those kinds of things. Or we are exposing these things uh, through our routers or our firewalls at home in a way that allows the entire world basically to scan, see you have an open uh, camera and attack it. And if you're not changing the default password in so many IoT uh, uh, devices when you buy it most people are just like well it's on it's working uh, they leave the default password there and so if your password is password it takes seconds to get into your your systems I've actually also done a live demonstration of how we can just query open video cameras that have already been found around the world and just get right to the login pages for businesses and personal that is terrifying so make sure when you've got IOT you're isolating it on the network, you're using good passwords, you're not opening up needless things in your firewalls or your routers to allow uh, traffic to come through to that camera. That's a very serious problem we have, and this proves it. And so please make sure that you are safe no matter what the technology you're running. And those were your breaches of the week. Were you affected? Let me know. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe and stay online. Thanks, everyone.